After appearing to rule out an in-out referendum on Britain's membership of the EU on Friday, yesterday David Cameron wrote an article suggesting that a future Conservative government may hold a referendum at some point, although he didn't say when. That hasn't pleased some Tory backbenchers who are demanding the PM gives a real cast-iron guarantee of a referendum. Remember that expression? This morning, the former Defence Secretary Liam Fox added fuel to the fire. In the last hour, he said that he supported calls for a clear referendum, but added that now is not the right time. I would like to see Britain negotiate a new relationship with the EU based on economic rather than political considerations and set out in clear and unambiguous language. If we succeed, a referendum should be held and formal acceptance advocated. If, on the other hand, this approach is rejected outright or falls short of our necessary red lines, then we would have no alternative but to recommend rejection and consider departure from the European Union. Liam Fox giving a speech there. Well, I'm joined now by UKIP leader Nigel Farage and by the Conservative MP Stuart Jackson, who resigned last autumn as a ministerial aide after he voted in favour of a referendum. Welcome to the programme. Stuart Jackson, what was your reaction to David Cameron's comments that there may be a referendum at some point? Well, I, I, I welcome them as far as they go, but I think that uh, there is a danger that we're not learning the lessons of the cast iron guarantee, the mm. Lisbon Treaty promise on the referendum. You can only play uh, footsie and titillation with the electors for so long before uh, there is a discrepancy between what voters think you're saying and what you're actually saying. And I think what I and many colleagues want is an um, ambiguous commitment, a route map to real renegotiation at this juncture, this historic juncture with the EU, and definitely a referendum to let the people decide. Right. Now, do you want it like that, a, a renegotiation first? and then an in-out referendum. Is that what you're saying? Well, Liam Fox, this morning I was at the speech, made a very coherent case uh, that uh, the Europhiles want there to be an immediate EU in-out referendum because they think they can win it through scaremongering and uh, basically lies about our role uh, outside of the European Union. I think we need, first of all, to use the opportunity of this very... Uh, uh, historic moment in European British relations to actually drive to use that leverage to drive a hard bargain and get real powers back from, from the European Union before we go for an out referendum. Well, Nigel Farage, <coughs> talk of a referendum. You could say that the Conservatives have moved quite a long way, six months, even if they're not satisfying backbenchers. Promise of a referendum would, would make you null and void. Well, I, I was in Brussels on Friday. I heard that Cameron speech. It was without doubt his most pro EU speech that he's ever given. It was passionate. You know, we must stay part of the EU. It brings enormous benefits to this country and I don't want there to be a referendum on membership because I've made my mind up and we must stay in. Uh, so I think the need for UKIP is probably greater than it's ever been. Uh, and I'm very nervous of this renegotiation. I'm very, very nervous that we'll finish up in a 1975 type position where apparently, you know, we won back fisheries in the Solent or something and it's put to a referendum and we're kept trapped inside the single market. What do you say to that? I mean, isn't there also a worry that the way that a lot of Tory backbenchers are behaving is going to end up splitting the party? In the end, the party is going to have another fractious time which will do it no good. Well, we've won the argument historically. We were told, for instance, on the single currency, uh, let's rule it out for one parliament, let's wait and see. People like Will Hutton were saying it's a fantastic thing. Actually, it's a recession-causing mechanism. It's inflicting poverty and destitution on millions of Europeans. We were right on that issue, and we were right when John Major well, said we were. Then. Well, because I think the best party that's placed to uh, take on this historic challenge to trust the people is the Conservative but your leader, But your leader is explicit. He thinks EU membership is a good thing and the British people must not be allowed a vote in case they give the wrong answer. Well, I think... Where he, said Nigel, he said it on Friday. Where <laughs> Nigel and I agree is that it's absolutely right that we did not sign up in 1975 at the time of the Common Market referendum to greater integration and the creation of one country called Europe. And I think it's time we trusted the people because, frankly, people don't trust senior politicians, mandarins or Europe any longer. But you're not going to get what you want. That's what Nigel Farage is saying. Staying in the Conservative Party, you said yourself you have been banking on having a say and you've been denied it. Well, one is not mutually exclusive of the other. You can press for renegotiation. My point is that David Cameron has to be clear, unambiguous and specific with a time frame about what that renegotiation will be, whether it's social policy, whether it's justice, uh, whether it's sentencing, Isn't that sensible, Nigel Farage? I mean, this is not the time, is it, surely, to be having this argument? We might as well wait and see 
see, as William Hague was saying, what kind of Europe and Eurozone we end up with after they have sorted themselves out. I mean, listen, you, you're right in one way, that several countries may leave the Eurozone, and that could change the shape of the EU. But what is for certain, and I'm off to Strasbourg later on today, what is for certain is we're going to get an EU that is ever more deeply integrated, ever more undemocratic. That is going to happen. And, and now, actually, as the EU itself is moving on and changing into something slightly different, now is exactly the right time for us to have that debate. Right, I mean, if they have that debate, there's no guarantee, of course, of an exit with a referendum, is there, Nigel? No, there's no guarantee of it, but look, I was a businessman. I got involved in politics because I felt these three parties were offering us no choice on this great issue, and I still feel the same way. Right. Well, where I do agree with Nigel is that UKIP is a major threat to the Conservative Party at the general election. If they poll above a certain uh, percentage... What, in, what percentage? Well, I would have thought four or five percent. If they poll above that, then the chances of the Conservative Party getting an overall majority diminish rapidly and therefore it is in our interest yeah. as a party as well as the national interest to take this debate head-on and have a mature and reasonable so really, debate. Really the stronger UKIP is the more likely a referendum well, uh, becomes. And just briefly, well, Hutton, I mean y y your reaction to this argument again about the fact that many Tory backbenchers feel deprived of having a referendum being marched up to the hill by David Cameron I mean an in-out referendum would make it final wouldn't it? I would make it final. I mean, I'm very suspicious of referenda. I don't like them. I mean, they're, they're, I'm not certain that they are the democratic instrument that you gentlemen say they are. Um, that's the first point. The second point is, is that I, I think in out, there's a lot of people working in the car industry, a lot of people work in the city of London, a lot of people work in uh, higher education who actually would think, bloody hell, leaving the European Union is going to give us a kick in the ass. Uh, and actually, I don't think that you, and I know you both think, because you're on the centre right, both of you, that actually there's a massive constituency you want to get out of Europe. Actually, you know, there is obviously 10, 20% of the population very passionate about it and share your view. There's an enormous number sitting in the centre who are unconvinced. How and do you I'm know you've that. never asked their uh, opinions? Well, yeah. but, you've never I, asked their opinions. Because I believe in representative democracy. I believe that, you know, we vote for our MPs and they take decisions in the House of Commons on our behalf. But there's and a, that is the, actually the way in which... You well, can't, there's you, a world you, you, out there. The people are going to vote for this. They're going to vote this as if it was the X factor. And we all... No, and yeah, and no. with, a, with an enormous... That's a really complacent and patronising attitude. There's a world out there of trade, a global trade world, $76 trillion worth of trade. Why be locked into a backward-looking, sclerotic, yeah. overtaxed bullshit position. It's credit bullshit union? Position. Well, you haven't well, moved well, on well, since there the 1960s. Uh, there are sorry, 60 I mean, countries. I'm sorry, but I mean, neither, well, you, neither well, you ever get well, challenged well, anybody. There are 60, the numbers of there are 60 countries. There are 60 countries around the world that now have a free trade agreement with the European Union. We, as their biggest right. export market, are asking for the same. Just, I mean, just I'm going to break. You, I'm yeah. Well, you can in just a moment, but we're going to move on.